All right, we'll leave it there. We're going to move on to this. It could be a big week for news out of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is about to release two rulings that could shape American politics for years to come. The justices will decide this week whether to let the Trump administration ask about citizenship in the 2020 census. And they're also expected to decide whether congressional district maps in North Carolina and Maryland are unconstitutional because they are drawn in too politically slanted a way. CBS News legal analyst, legal analyst and law professor Kim Whaley is the author of the new book, How to Read the Constitution and Why. Kim, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so for people who are not legal eagles watching every <laughs> move from the Supreme Court, they hear about these two cases, the question about are you a citizen potentially on the census and the drawing of, of congressional maps. What are the stakes for the average American? Well, there's a lot of forces moving away from individual votes counting and corporate money, other sort of interests actually deciding our democracy. So these particular cases could, one, the citizenship could either favor or disfavor uh, counting heads based on race. I think that's the question. That is, if, if people have to answer citizenship, they might not answer the, the census at all. There'd be fewer heads in that particular state. That state might get either fewer votes in Congress and or less money. So that's number one. Gerrymandering is a big one because that's on both sides of the political spectrum. Both Democrats and Republicans carve up districts in ways to make sure that they continue to win regardless of what the voters want. And the Supreme Court has so far not stepped in with a standard for to test when something is too carved up and when something is, is sufficient. So we have to see if they're going to do it this time. So go ahead. go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so if, if two carved up, then what you're saying is people's votes will not matter as much as they should, or people's states will not have the representation they, they should. Yeah, the idea is that even if you are a Democrat, if you're in a solidly Republican carved up district that winds, you know, a, 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 along a river in some bizarre way, you will never, ever flip that district to the other side because of the way it's carved up. It will just automatically be a shoe in for that prior candidate. I want to pick up on what Tony was saying about the voting, because you write, in a crumbling democracy, the vote really matters. Do you think we are living in a crumbling democracy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that, you know, Justice Douglas talked about the twilight of democracy, and when it happens, it'll be slow. It's not going to be obvious. And we're in a, uh, an era where we have increasing power in the office of the presidency, not just under uh, Donald Trump, but for decades now, and a Congress that's not really pu putting up some stop signs. And it's human nature. If there's, if there's a stop sign, but there's no consequences, you'll blow through the stop sign. And eventually, if we have too much power in government, that's going to hurt the individual. And so... People have to think about taking their government back, and the best way to do that is at the ballot box. So, so let's talk about this with regard to Iran, because the president says he doesn't need congressional approval to strike Iran. What does the Constitution actually say? The Constitution is in conflict here. Co uh, Congress has the power to declare war and to raise armies and to support armies, but the president has the commander-in-chief power. And so scholars differ on which the chicken and egg, which comes first. Does there have to be a declaration of war before you could send troops into battle? Or once they create troops, the president in charge. As effectively, at the end of the day, Congress has allowed presidents over and over to send troops into battle. So again, without a stopgap, without a stop sign, uh, a ticket on the, on the windshield saying, you know, President, we're stopping you here, essentially that kind of power has amassed in the office of the president. You know, I remember in 2016, people were keeping their constitution yes. in their front pockets. Yes, right. they were. This is a little big to fit in the front pocket, <laughs> yeah. but, but maybe the back pocket. You can you tear know. out the back. It's in there. The constitution's in there. All right. We don't want to mess up the book. Thank yeah. you very much, Kim Whaley, for joining us this morning. How to Read the Constitution and Why is on sale wherever you like to buy your books.